Boy, it is getting cold out here. Woo Man, I'm freezing. Man, and when you, when it starts feeling like this, man, you know dormancy's coming. Ah, dormancy is coming. It's the, it's my, my most dreaded time of year. You know, it's the time where all of our beautiful plants, you know, hibernate, take their winter rest, and we don't get to enjoy their beauty for a couple months. It's more than a couple, but, Today we'll talk about what I do as far as dormancy when it comes to my plants here in North Carolina. Uh, maybe it's some stuff that you can pull from me and apply in your specific areas. Um, you know, hopefully this helps somebody out there. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. All right, Insect Decidal Gang, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you can pretty much guess because of the intro and the title of the video, we're here to talk about dormancy, the dreaded dormancy. Um, so, you know, I actually took a couple notes so that I wouldn't go on too many tangents. I want to keep this one short and concise, short and sweet. So um, first and foremost, we'll talk about what dormancy is. It's just a period of time during the year where our plants just get a little bit of rest. They spend all spring and summer and even some of fall growing and giving us nice, beautiful pictures and fly and, and traps on the fly traps and nice, uh, shiny, dewy leaves on the sundews but they need their rest too. So uh, dormancy is just that. Uh, here I have all North American plants. Um, that's what I'll speak to today. I have four Saracenia up here, Seleucophylla. I've got all species plants too, no hybrids. We're gonna talk about straight species because it's a little bit, well, it doesn't really matter in this topic, but Seleucophylla, this is a Flava, an Oreophila, which you can see, it's just Phylodia, and then this is a Purpurea. Um, and then I have uh, one of my favorite fly traps here, and then this one is Drosera Intermedia, Moore County, North Carolina. Shout out to my boy Chandler for gifting me this plant. It's my only location data that Sun do in the collection, so I make sure I take care of it and don't chop the flowers. Nevertheless, um, so what is dormancy? Like I said at the beginning, it's just a period of rest for the plants. It's as simple as that. Um, here in North Carolina, th this is one thing, there's a lot of seasonality in this uh, or location-based information. But here in North Carolina, our dormancy usually runs from early to late October, well, mid to late October through about mid-March. Uh, usually I start seeing flower buds on my Saracenia, which is like the first sign of the plants um, waking back up. Um, typically around mid to late March is when I start seeing um, flower buds on my Saracenia. Um, depending on where you live, like some of my friends out in California, they start seeing flower buds late January, early February. And, I'm just, and we're all over here on the East Coast feeling jealous. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, dormancy is just a time where these plants take all of those bugs and all of that sunlight that they took in over the uh, course of the past season and they rest and they apply it to below ground growth. They grow roots and bigger rhizomes and all of those types of things. And then they come back in the spring and they uh, put out new leaves and keep the party going. Uh, that's pretty much the, what dormancy is. You know, it's a big scary time, especially for new growers, which you know my channel is devoted a lot towards new growers. Just like to ease that anxiety and that stress about some of the things that may not be clear to you, uh, given some of the information that's out there. So uh, my next point of topic is, uh, well, it was wind, but I just talked about that. But again, just on the wind, it depends on where you live. Some of the, um, some of the people down in Florida, their dormancies shift and are maybe a little shorter like i said in california and some of those places that are a little bit warmer and they have less uh, have milder winters their dormancies are usually a little short as well uh, one thing i want to talk about is what it looks like so right now my plants are starting to transition some of them so like on flava for instance you start getting these whimsical pictures that lets you know that it's winding down for the season in the spring and summer, Flavas and Oreophilas put out their most robust pictures. In the fall, a lot of Oreophila clones don't do anything. 
like this one right here, you can see it just has all of its non-carnivorous leaves. I went through and clipped a lot of my plants back a, the, a couple days ago. So that's why this one has no pictures, but the pictures that it did have on it were uh, bent over and they were all brown and all of that stuff. But this one does have a little small picture coming in that, I, well, it may be a phyllodia, not sure just yet, but same thing with this flava, very whimsical looking plant. You know, um, it had way better looking pictures in the spring and summer. With your uh, fly traps, this one still hasn't started to transition yet. It still has summer traps. Fly traps have a little bit of seasonality as well that a lot of people don't talk about. In the spring, they grow, um, they, pr they grow pretty big traps in the spring, but they're low to the ground and they kind of hug the ground during the summer months which in here in north carolina happens late April, uh late may going into june they start to grow these taller more thin leaves with uh nice uh disproportionately sized traps on them we call those summer traps not all fly trap cultivars produce summer traps like this but general rule is most of them do you, like i said you have a couple cultivars that don't those are the exception but the rule is if you're giving them enough sunlight they'll start growing like this with sundews you don't really have much seasonality that i can see they flower all year as you can see this plant's been out here since last winter and this thing is still flowering and it's september so with sundews you don't have very much seasonality in my opinion but dormancy on all of these will look different the saracenia will just stop growing which is another thing, a lot of people think the, they are deciduous like an oak tree, for instance, where oak tree, the leaves turn brown, all the leaves fall off and you just got bare twigs and bare stems uh, all winter. Saracenia and these other carnivorous plants aren't necessarily like that. You With Saracenia, as long as it doesn't get too crazy cold, these leaves will stay. They'll brown out a little bit, but they'll stay. It just doesn't grow any new ones, but it doesn't shed them. Um, Purple Red, for instance, doesn't shed their leaves very much at all. Here in my area, though, I lose a lot of my Purple Red pictures during the winter time. So um, some places where, you know, shout out California carnivores, you'll see vi their videos and maybe Saracenia and Northwest where they say they don't trim their purple rib over the winter. Their p pictures last season to season. Like they have pictures from last year coming into the next year. I have that too, but it's only a small amount. And it's usually the ones that grew in the fall. Mine shed a lot of leaves. I've, I've, I've hacked back like 75, 80% of my purple rib in the spring because the pictures are just dead. Um, Oreophila, for instance, does practically nothing in the fall, and I just uh, chop one of the phyllodia off. But they do practically nothing late fall, or I mean, late summer, early fall. So um, in the winter time, though, fly traps. This is the part where people get confused or just don't know. Fly traps grow pit, uh, traps, carnivorous leaves in the winter. I have pictures. I'll try to put them in. Uh, I'll try to post them in this video where i did a series called dead or dormant here on youtube where i showed what my fly traps look like during dormancy because there's no information out there so during the winter they grow really 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 tiny traps and they hug the ground very tightly but the plants still have green on them this is why you know me personally, I leave my plants out in full sun all year because they still get energy from the sun. All right, last but not least, let's talk about how I handle the dormancy. Now, again, I always have to get this disclaimer. For whatever reason in the hobby, people feel offended when you don't do things the way they do it. <laughs> so I'm just here to tell you, this is how I have found success <laughs> handling dormancy. It's always funny when I gotta do that because people, man, you guys couldn't imagine the comments I get was like, well, I do it like this, I do it. <laughs> man, let's just stay on topic. So for me, number one, I pour back on water in the plants. They uh, they don't need as much water, if any at, at all, during the wintertime. I drain my water trays, I don't water my box. 
My bogs, I water them deep in like early October. And then I don't touch them again for the rest of the winter. And they're perfectly fine. With the tray plant, the plants that I have sitting in water trays, I drain the water trays once the temperature start maxing out at like 60 something degrees because they don't need as much water, especially when they're dormant. They're not processing the water. They're not uptaking as much water anymore. So I go into a watering as needed um, mind frame. And a lot of it is just picking pots up. How do they feel? What's the weight? Like this one's a little light. Let me water this tray. And what I'll do is I'll just top water them just, just to soak the peat a little bit. And that'll last for weeks because of how much humidity is in the air and stuff like that. But that's how I carry it. You know, some people, like if you live in Cali and you don't have as much humidity and your plants are still draining the water trays through the winter, then you may have to do something a little bit different. The goal is keeping them moist, but not saturated at all. How you get to that is up to you. You can be as creative as you want to be. Me, like I said, I just drag the hose over, shoot it over all the plants like it's raining. Do that for five or 10 minutes, perfectly fine. That'll end up with like an eighth of an inch of water in the water tray and that gets gone whenever. But, um, you know, as far as water's concerned, I pull back on the water. You know, you'll hear people say it doesn't matter. I feel like it does depending on what area you live in. Here in North Carolina, I don't know anybody. Like I know some people with some big collections. All of them drain their water trays. This is not a crazy thing that I made up. Drain the water trays and water as needed. You know, like I said, it come, that's, that's as far as checking pots. Oh man, this one feels good. Oh man, this one's super dry. You know, and then typically when that happens, I'll just water them all at one time and just hit the, and reset the clock on them. Here's an exception. When it's gonna be really, really cold outside, going into the 20s, fill the water trays up. I don't touch the bogs, they're, they're fine. But I fill the water trays up, that insulates the roots on the plants. You know, that, um, you don't want them freeze drying. And they freeze dry by being too dry when it's really cold outside and having that nipping wind, it'll literally pull the moisture out of the plants and kill them. So that is the only time where I add water to those trays. If it's gonna be 25 degrees at night for three or four days in a row, or below freezing during the day for a couple days in a row. We had this happen in December or January where we were below, we were at or below freezing or like 35 degrees max for like two weeks. So me, I just came out, filled out, filled all the water trays for all the plants and left them alone. As long as they have some water in there to help insulate the roots and keep them from freeze dry, it'd be perfectly fine. Like I said, you'll see a lot of people saying that once they hit 50 degrees, 40 degrees or whatever, that it's time to bring them in. They are perfectly fine outside. We hit 15 degrees last year and these things like these fly traps and all of these were brick solid, snowed on them. These pots were frozen solid. You can break your finger tapping on the side of the pot. They're perfectly fine. Um, once you start getting down into the single digits, though, you need to start devising a plan on how you're going to, you know, go about protecting your plants, whether that be putting them in a hoop house. You can do that. That a lot of times will create greenhouse effect that makes it warmer on the inside than it is outside. I think I'm going to build one over my bog this year to do the same thing to keep it from taking in so much water during the winter since it doesn't have any drainage nevertheless that's off topic but you know if you start getting into like those low teens or the single digits that's when you need to start looking at okay am i doing enough or do i need to do something else to protect my plants if you're in an area where that only lasts for a week or two three weeks you don't really have to put your plants in the refrigerator and all of those things just put them in a shed bring them inside put them in the garage if you have a space put them by a cold window and they'll typically stay dormant for you you know, um, I will say I'm not a big fan of the refrigerator method, but I'm, I understand that people have to do it. I've just seen people's plants when they take them out of the refrigerator. I've seen how stretched out they look. They, they're light starved. They were, you know, in the, in the freaking refrigerator and they're pitch black dark. My plants take on energy all year round. 
you know, even during the winter when they have, you know, their their winter foliage, the rhizomes and all of those things are still photosynthesizing. So, you know, if you can refrain from having to just leave your plants in pitch black dark, I would do that. Can they survive in pitch black dark? Yes. Is it beneficial? No. Take that how you want, you know, um, but for me, like I said, I pull back on water. I don't touch them. They freeze solid. It's pretty much nothing really for you to do. That's your time to prepare for the next season. Get seed started. Um, you know, if you're going to be doing some outside stratification, you know, start trimming back your plants. Like I trimmed this one back the other day. I trimmed this one back the other day. I haven't gotten to this one yet. It doesn't really need it yet. It's got a couple that needs to be trimmed back. But you go ahead and start trimming your plants back and stuff like that to have your task done. That's pretty much what you're doing during the winter versus really taking care of your plants. So during the during the dormancy for me, it's all about paying attention to the forecast and seeing what's coming up. Okay, is it snowing? You don't need to do anything because the snow insulates them. That was the time where my bogs thawed out was when it snowed, which is crazy. But uh, during, you know, the other times where it's like 30, 25, whatever, they were frozen solid. Even the big ones frozen brick hard. And um, but yeah, that's just how I carry dormancy. I pay attention to the weather. I water as needed, as needed, water as needed. The goal is to make sure they get moisture. It's not necessarily how much, I mean, how you do it is if you did it. So just make sure they have enough moisture for survival. That's what I do during, during winter, except for when it's going to be super cold. Outside of that, they don't sit in water. The water trays are drained 100% of the time, and I just top water them as needed. Um, outside of that, there's nothing really much for you to do. Your plant isn't dead until you know it's dead. You know, you'll see those things die all the way back, but you'll still have some green. As long as they still look fleshy and still have life, they're not dead. So um, I hope this video helped somebody. If you uh, have any questions, leave them in the comments. And again, here's my disclaimer. This is how I do it. I know you guys do your thing and you put them in the refrigerator and nothing has ever happened to your plants. I'm here to tell you it's not beneficial for them, but they'll survive it. But I'll check you guys later and I appreciate you checking out the video.